And with that, welcome to United States Space Force News. Today's video is going to be very different than most videos in the sense that we will be playing some of General Solchman's speech from the State of the Space Force at the AFA conference in Washington, D.C. The following video is only but a portion, as you will notice the link inside of the news article here. However, the full transcript will play all the way through. So, if you don't have 30 minutes to watch the video, stay tuned and watch this. Morning, AFA. We're all caffeinated up, right? Ready to go talk space for a bit? All right. Like it. Come on up closer. <laughs> Thank you, Secretary Kendall, for your steadfast leadership, support of the Space Force, and most importantly, your laser focus on the threat. China, China, China. Your drive to make us better and optimize for the challenges we face is truly a force multiplier. And to CQ. Thank you for working alongside the Space Force, being such a strong advocate for space superiority. Clear skies and strong tailwind on your confirmation to be our next chairman. Now, speaking of great partners, because these are two high-quality partners, today is my 31st wedding anniversary. <clears throat> More than any other, Jennifer's kept my head in the game and focused on what really matters. Thanks, we are. Now, later this week, Chief Master Sergeant Toby Toberman is going to retire after close to 32 years of service to both our Air Force and Space Force. <laughs> Toby, we could not have picked a better chief to be the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. Your efforts in taking care of Guardians will be felt for years to come. Thank you for all that you've done for me the Guardians, and the U.S. Space Force. And finally, shout out and thank you to AFA for giving me the opportunity to talk about where the Space Force is heading. I speak for all Guardians when I say we appreciate all you do to bring us together each and every year. But now let's get on to business. Ladies and gentlemen, the space domain that I learned to fly satellites in is no more. The new space domain is far different. It has taken on characteristics of a more dangerous and dynamic security environment worldwide. But don't take my word for it. You heard yesterday Secretary Kendall lay out in great detail the security circumstances we find ourselves in today. I will not belabor the point. But it should be noted that no domain is immune from these circumstances. And as an integral part of our security environment, the space domain is now more contested than at any other point in history. This was the genesis of the Space Force, a military service focused on addressing the challenges and opportunities we face in the space domain. We were created for this new space era, an era increasingly characterized by great power competition. And with this in mind, I recently asked our guardians to take a look at our mission statement and make sure that it properly described who we are and what we do. And when I asked, guardians responded. Here is the result. This is our mission statement, and guardians, these are your words. Secure our nation's interests in, from, and to space. It's simple, it's direct, and it clearly reflect, reflects our purpose and identity as guardians. This new mission statement defines the why of the Space Force. Despite its simplicity, these nine words are packed with six separate and distinct concepts. These concepts help clarify what the Department of Defense tasks us to do each and every day. Let me explain. Let's start with the word first, the first word secure. It's used here in the military sense. When we say secure, we're referring to the Space Force's charge to prepare ourselves to control by military means if necessary, the space domain as part of any joint force effort. Next, the words our nation reflect the trusted connection between guardians and the nation we serve. The beneficiaries of our work are not a distinct 
abstract group. They're us. We are deeply connected to our work and the outcomes. Our guardians have volunteered to answer the nation's call to arms, and we remain fiercely committed to defending it. The next concept, interests, refers to the security and prosperity our nation derives from space. America's interests in space are immense and growing. And from a military perspective, Guardians are integral members of the joint team, since all joint force operations depend on space capabilities and protection from space-enabled attacks. Now the phrase in, from, and to space refers to core functions of the Space Force. Guardians secure our nation's interests in space through space activities that protect the joint force and the nation from space and counterspace threats. A service must be able to control its domain in order to be able to access and exploit it. For our service, space superiority is the first core function, and it is the in aspect of the mission statement. It is the ability to contest and, when necessary, control the space domain at a time and place of our choosing. In the last era, we were able to meet our mission just by accessing and exploiting the space domain. But now this domain is contested, and therefore control of the domain is an operational imperative. Each service must be able to control its domain. Air superiority, sea control, land dominance, and now space superiority. The ability to contest a domain with military force is the formative purpose of a service. Recognition of the need to focus on this critical function was the primary reason for the creation of the U.S. Space Force. And with this space superiority, Guardians will now secure our nation's interest from space by delivering critical global operations like satellite communications, precision navigation and timing to the joint force. A service must be able to exploit its domain. Once a service has control of its domain, it can then perform the other missions. For example, as this audience well knows, once the Air Force has control of the air domain, it can perform close air support, interdiction, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, and mobility. But what we equally know is that it is a prerequisite, meaning if we can't control our domain, the ability to exploit it is severely limited. For the Space Force, we exploit the domain by providing global mission operations as the second core function or the from identified in the mission statement. Global mission operations enable the Joint Force to integrate the joint functions across all domains on a global scale. This is an important distinction, and only the U.S. Space Force can provide these truly worldwide capabilities our forces absolutely require as they defend U.S. and allied interests around the world. In short, the Joint Force needs global communications, indications of warning, and precision. As I speak, the Space Force's Delta IV is guarding our Joint Force, assuring our allies, deterring nuclear conflict, by providing worldwide missile warning. Delta-8 is on duty every minute of every day, providing the Joint Force with a secure, reliable, and resilient global communications architecture. And additionally, Guardians operating the GPS constellation providing the, provide the gold standard in precision, navigation, and timing. And this audience well knows the value of GPS-enabled precision and even the criticality of the synchronization benefits provided by the GPS timing signal. But I think it's also noteworthy that the American public is increasingly becoming aware of the contribution GPS and the Space Force make to the economy and our everyday life. Finally, Guardians secure the nation's interest to space by assuring we have the ability to launch satellites into orbit and then connect to and control them with a global ground network. The service must be able to access its domain even during a conflict. The ability to get to the domain and leverage all domains in pursuit of military objectives is essential to success. Whether we call this deployment, sortie generation, or fleet operations, it is crucial that we be able to do it, do it effectively, and do it promptly. So for the Space Force, assured access is our third core function, the two in our mission statement. And it takes the form of two mission areas, launch capabilities and the satellite control network. That's the network that establishes the radio frequency links to the satellites in order to command, download mission data, or transfer information between satellites. 
In the end, the mission statement and core functions provide guardians with shared purpose, a common understanding of the core functions that drive us towards our objectives. And I want to invite each guardian to consider their place within the mission statement and the core functions. They define our organizing principles. They clarify the assumptions we're making. They help identify the equipment we need to buy, identify the training guardians need to be effective, and the myriad of other decisions that a military service needs to make to get the mission done. And with that, we thank you for watching U.S. Space Force News. If you'd like to see the full article or watch the full video, don't forget to check the description of the full article. And until next time, thanks for watching.